So yeah, as I was saying, we'll do, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see the, um, the Doty examples. So I, I've been doing a, a bit of work with Doty. So how, how could we improve the syntax mainly by using the uh, new union types? So we'll, we'll explore that. The, um, this GitHub has, has a, a small domain, has a few classes with very simple domain that we'll use to, to, to f for our play. So you want to have a look, but, but mainly. Uh, and this repo doesn't have the, the features that I'm going to use. That's, that's only my, my I'll, I'll publish it later, but at the moment it's a bit hacky. So I wanted to first see how it works and then we can go into the details if you, that's there. So yeah, I think we are on, we are all in Lambda Conf, so probably a statically typed PRFP. That's what, what uh, I do. That's, that's been my background and I'm a true believer. The uh, re reasoning capabilities and basically the safety gives us, let's not get much into that. But uh, I think I agree that we, there, there is a, a syntactic price we, we do, we will lose to dynamic typing. And I, I think the, the ergonomics of, of the language is an important aspect. And yeah, especially when, when, when DSLs, I think are becoming more and more, more, mm. more important. And it, it is a bit, I, I would like that, that the, our language is allowed for internal DSLs. So instead of just having to create a, a whole new language that our libraries and our APIs behave more like, like DSLs because, well, it's uh, FP is declarative. Our languages, we always say we don't execute code. We, we interpret a declaration, a description of a program. So that's basically, it's a bit counterintuitive that, that our languages don't, are not very economic in, in terms of uh, DSLs because we, we strive for, for being declarative. And as opposed, to, as opposed to imperatives where we're always thinking about the code execution, the steps in FP, we, we abstract from that and we, we think about the whole thing. So yeah, as I said, yes, that would be ideal. We had a bit more lean uh, syntaxes. So feel that the types don't get in the way, but obviously we don't want to compromise on, on all the features that make them great in terms of safety and being able to reason about them, like higher kind of types, parametricity, and so on. So yeah, let's, as I said, the expert on language, all, all these guys, those are the ultimate DSLs. And let's try to start making this, this connection that, I mean, I'm, I'll be open to, to debate and talk later. Sometimes maybe it's a bit far-fetched, but I wanted to push, push um, ideas and bounce them with you and let's, let's see what comes out of that. So um, first thing is grammar rules. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the formatting. I don't know what I've done, but I uh, couldn't fix everything. But I think we will see the, the slides, at least we'll see the content. So I'm, I'm making a connection between the, the types and grammar rules. Well, that's fairly obvious. Both describe a set of values. It's just that the, the grammar rules, the grammar, the, their domain is purely uh, strings. Uh, atoms of a language, and in languages is, is a much more rich domain. But we, we could think that it's, it's like a set of values that's a type. So if we push that analogy a bit further, we'll see that type checking and matching, or on a on a on a parser, we could think that we start making a connection, basically with, with a. a something being of type A means that there are some rules in, in the type A that basically those properties defined for the type basically apply to, to that value. That value honors the type, I, even if it belongs to the set. When, when type systems, if we don't add any properties, we just tag the name 
Um, that, that, that's a bit of a difference with all the time systems that are more structural. Uh, for the FP languages I'm going to talk about, they are, they are not, but uh, not mainly, but you still see some, some structural capabilities. But uh, again, the, there are algebraic uh, subtyping, and I think, I think that it's becoming more structural, extensible records, and I think it's going that direction. But in any case, we can think of matching values to, to types. Let's get with that idea. Uh, as I said, they have recursion, they have functions. Basically, in, in rules, you can say if you match this, this rule, then take that and apply some transformation in, in well, most of the parts is allowed to do this. So you don't even need to go to a, to a language. You, you, you can apply transformations, that's basically functions. You have uh, binding, attribute grammars, as I said, and then there is also parametricity in some grammar theory, like, yeah, I, I could go with some details, some links if anybody's interested, but I probably a Google search could give you. And so if anybody thinks that's too far-fetched, let's think about what's the essence of computation, the lambda calculus. So we also see that the, the values are a combination of symbols. So basically, we, we, we act on our symbols are from a character set of a, of a language. So it's the abstractions match the input variable on the body. And then we, the, app, the application replaces that substring with, with the variable, with whatever you passed in the variable. So, so there's definitely something, there's an analogy there. Uh, going, trying to see if uh, what people's done about that. Yeah, there's no, no surprise that there are many papers. For example, this one, uh, the Lambda Calculus Interpreter was implemented with regex, with regex rules and parallel. So it, it's something that basically is matching something and is completely with the caveats of alpha alpha transformations, obviously, that to do with the scoping. And, but, but we see the general term and, and people implement them with the same uh, set, the same tools that they implement uh, rules. So let's carry on this concept of uh, matching with the grammar and the type. So and the other important, as I said, the algebraic nature, that's something I consider very important. So in the grammars, it's ent entirely, entirely algebraic meaning that they have everything is a composition of products and co-products. So the product is the concatenation. So we have an example. So email is a username, a, some random characters, at in this case, um, provider. Um, yeah, sorry, I'll, I lost the formatting, but it will have been different. Username provider are rules. The at is just a character, and so it's composing two, two rules that you could match any, any uh, email, for example. And then you have the co-product, which is choice, or disjunction, or however you want to, to call it. The user ID could be either a rule that matches an email, or could match a Twitter handle. Um, but that's basically that that could be a definition of a type if any on our languages. So let's try to use if some algebraic encodings could uh, help us with some of the issues with with the the obesity of the syntax that we have in, in FP languages. For example, the, there is an encoding for uh, factorial options. Basically, if we lift the optionality into a, into a functor, we have option or, or maybe in Haskell. And that's basically um, A or unit. It is basically a disjunction between these two possible values. And one, one of the driving forces for this talk is test this in, in Doty. So that's now valid syntax in Doty, having an A and, and, and unit. Um, this junction, so it's basically, a, it simply we replace the unit with another type, so it's exactly the same. There's nothing different. So we, we're already achieving some 
more cohesive in coding. Basically, the concept is, is not a different concept. It's simply a disjunction. It doesn't matter if it's a unit on the right or another type. So we are already liking this. I think it's, a, it's not two concepts or two different. I think sometimes we, we like uh, tagging names to things and because the, you can create papers and create, but uh, sometimes the, there is a cognitive overhead as well. It's not just the syntax, it's just the concepts. We keep adding concepts, but maybe with this encoding is the same. This junction, when people understand that unit only has one value, that basically transposes directly to, to this case. So using everything, products to products, let's see if we extend this, if we can get any value out of this. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, some complexity with, yeah. Anyway, there's some complexity with the, uh, with the non-algebraic, sorry, I should have said non, there's non-algebraic idioms. Uh, we don't have a structure of uh, the arity, so, or kindness, but also arity, so. Moving a functor from one element to two is a big thing, and we're gonna basically extend. It's now with extensible records that's that's getting better, but but we it still is not not as natural as in a grammar. You could just basically tag along as many rules as you want, just adding bars, basically increasing the co-product, adding more elements to it, and we we see that we we hit the wall quite soon in FP, so. I guess we'll always have to deal with something like option of either or something or either of some option or nested either or and yeah this this is not not fun to to do basically either we we resort to mono transformers which can do the trick or or sometimes we we create an a custom ADT so basically we encode the options in our own data type but again that's we, we lost, the, we are not using the composability, the, basically the building blocks of the language. We are creating a, our own data type that has this option. So I feel that's a bit of a, a failure of, of the, of the algebra, underlying algebra. We are denormalizing different options into our own data type, basically a seal trait in Scala or a ADT in, in Haskell. And I don't know if I'm missing here the um, yeah, sorry, there, there was some code underneath showing all the machinery that you have to do to use the, the option, but I guess if, if, you, if, if, you just, if you just did, you know that it's, yeah. And, and also, again, the cognitive overhead of going this way, because then it's a, you need to teach people, so a beginner goes and hits the wall, and you need to go into mono transformers, which is, again, First, learn your mono, then your mono transformer. So, there, there is definitely is not not straightforward. Not uh, the user experience and the cognitive overhead is, is there. So, if we again went with the algebraic encoding, we, we simply again it's nothing new. It's just it's um, transitive. Well, distributes. Uh, well, well. I'm not sure if I'm using the, the rabbit, but where you see it, basically we, we can simplify of a coproduct of another coproduct, so distributes. So, but, uh, so simplifies in just a coproduct of three three elements. It's the same concept. So again, we we avoided cognitive overheads of going through monads and monad transformers and option either. We care about the elements, and, and the disjunction is a, a fundamental building block of our language. Ideally, we'll see what can we do with both use this. So, so we see we see it's a, it's a quite nice encoding, but why don't we why don't we use this, or, or why not everybody is just jumping in 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 Doty like throwing away your either, so your mono transformers and that. It's because we, ha how do we map about that, that product, or how do we do anything with it really? We've, we've lost, we've lost the, um, the, um, the bias, which is 
some important thing that we use when we have an either we, we map because we, we have a bias we choose the, the, the right element and we have the the um, convention on the left is the uh, exceptional code exceptional path and the right is the the right one so yeah we, we lost the bias and and also we've lost in in the, in the case of Scala we don't have any uh, compiler is fully erased, erased, so it's difficult to map. So that's that's what I've been, I've been. We are going to show now in the code. Maybe we can move to the code because we we'll start a bit late. Yes, try to show the the types of things that I, I wanted to do. So I want if I have an a value that is of type A or B or C at this junction and I have a function that goes from B to Q. Uh, I, I'm saying, why not apply directly and uh, I get uh, A to Q to C. It's uh, something that probably uh, somebody out of the language will have said. That makes sense. If you have these three facts, I could basically pick, uh, mix and match, pick and, and, and choose. And, but Again, that it might it might be thrown open in, in languages, and definitely it's not something that we we do as in the base basic language. Obviously, we we can do case analysis, we can create our own combinators, but there is a there is a cost. You cannot just directly apply. So uh, I I wonder why, and maybe maybe we could do better. So. Let's go to test if we can do anything, something like that with, with Cody, with Cody, sorry, Dotty. And let's move to the, um, so restarted, so I have to go again. And yeah, this is, let's increase. So good. So if you just start SBT, oops, sorry. So we start with SBT console. This will start a, a console in, in Doty. We'll load Doty. And then we have like a a few warnings just because again we will start to see sorry i forgot to mention for those of you that are not aware of, or very familiar with scala and the evolution of scala that is the the next version of scala scala 3.0 uh, and one of the the quite exciting new features is union types so su supports union times types in the, in the language so so the the bars a b or c or types are basically supported in the language but it's not going to be it's not going to be um, straightforward because as i said uh, types are completely erased in the jvm and it's not doing anything special with encoding so the use cases are going to be limited so we already see that there are some cases in some of the code I had behind the scenes and things that I know I'm covering all the cases, the, um, the um, totality analysis of, of the compiler is telling me that it's not total, but even if I, I know it, it is, it is. And, and that's probably due to that it has the, the interaction with union types still is, needs to be uh, probably ironed out a bit in the compiler. So what, what I've done is um, let's load this basic uh, domain. I think I have here in snippets domain. You have it in the, in the root of the project. I found the project, I No, but there's no source, but in the root of the project, in the root, there is a domain, yeah. So let's, let's look at the, at the code. 
So very, very simple. It's not worth spending much time with it. It's going to be a, a simple process where you have, have a string as an input. You, you validate it, and then you have a, an extra step that takes, takes an address. And if it's been valid, so you, you create a shipping tag. And if it's invalid, you, you produce an, a shipping error. So the, the key here is having validations that, that have these two validations provide these error types. So, so we, see that, we see that the process I want to, the, the signature of, of the process I want to create is from string to a shipping tag, ideally happy path, but I need to carry all the, basically the list of possible errors. I'll, I'll aggregate it through, during the, the function, the composition of my, of my process, which uh, there are shipping error, invalid address, or no address at all. So that's already something that is not possible usually because we, as I said, we are limited by RET. So we had either CO with one error type parameter. So then we need to conflate them into, into a list of errors or, or a top type parent of this, these errors. But we, we cannot say in, that in the type, these are exactly the three or four or five errors that might happen during this, this uh, function call when we call this function. So th that's already something to note and, and yeah, you can notice that because this error, they don't have any specific, they don't extend anything, th there's nothing special about them. So, so let's see what, how we can behave with this. So then we have functions, a few functions that over that model. So we have, it's very, very simple, known empty. It will check that the first string is non-empty so that we have something. Then we have a, a validate address, which, but both of them have a right um, type, basically the, the invalid case. So, I mean, already I, I've, I changed the norm in a way. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't intended. It's just, for me, it's more clear. If, if I call a function, first I get the value that I'm interested in. On the right, there are possible exceptional cases, but uh, I just noticed that that's not how we see it because in an either, we always see the, the error on the left. So that's, that's part of the disjunction. The, the beauty is that it's unordered. So A or B or B or A is, is exactly the same. We are introducing some ordering, some basically fitting into our narrow boxes when mathematically or theoretically, uh, there's nothing that basically dictates that, so unintended, but I think it's a nice thing to see. So yeah, validate address, again, it's a silly address, but it is Colorado. And yeah, uh, again, the people want to say, well, why don't you just nom empty and validate address, but maybe uh, be more compositional. Maybe if our syntax, if our way to compose things was more, more powerful, then we wouldn't basically change the functions and we would compose more. Maybe we had a non empty for strings that serves any case. I would just use that. And we'll see how we can use both of them together, chain them without, without having to change validate address to include non emptiness. And yeah, well, it wouldn't be no address because that's pertaining to address validation. But well, imagine instead of no address was empty string or, or something. The address of address is address. Basically, the compiler simplifies that to. So, like either text, text in Haskell, you couldn't reproduce that. Yeah, no, because it's it's introducing the bias which this doesn't have it. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, in the encoding I'm using behind the scenes, there is bias. Um, I would go over that. That the, the types in the compiler are not bias. It's just trying to make them useful. You need to do things, but we'll go over that. Let's see how, how we can execute this because yeah, that's basically ship is the, the final step after you have the validations. 
which also perform some kind of it could it could pro, it could uh, trigger uh, an exceptional case. We have a shipping error, and it's simply from an address. We 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 embed it in a shipping tag or um, delivery order or whatever. That's a very simple case, but I think what I wanted to show is how we can change them because obviously in FPS, yeah, function composition we can always compose and then with, with dot, but when we introduce exceptional cases, it's not straightforward. We, it's with either, or imagine if instead of two cases we have three, that always causes issues. So in this encoding of being thinking algebraically and uh, these junctions, how could we do this? So let's, let's go back to, um, uh, sorry, I, sh I shouldn't have, Left it and create another terminal. In case I want to. So yeah, I think I only need to load the main. And the functions. And we see there's nothing special about them. It's from a string to a string new address, from ship, shipping, shipping error. So could, can we compose this? Can we say our process is, we said we wanted to do it from string, which by the way is not that good. Don't do it at home if there is any beginner looking at this, obviously it should be an effect or, but it, it doesn't matter because we, all of the processing here is non-effectful and we could always map to, a, to an effect and basically avoids, when we are not using effects or everything is completely deterministic, then the using more powerful monads or transformers. So then we are basically using a applicative style of composing disjunction or product. Anyway, just an aside. So we want it from string to to, we want it to be the, either the shipping order, the, um, so the shipping tag, that's the happy, happy path, but it might happen that we have a shipping error, or we have the, the invalid address, or we have the no address. I'm not including the address because I want to just compose functions, so I have a single one that does the whole thing. So the, if, you, if you follow the, the flow, the address gets consumed when you, so you have a valid address, then it goes to shipping tag. So we only have one result and the others are exceptional cases. So we, Obviously, we want this the initial string, and now uh, from let's. Well, I, I like the point three or well this I mean, stem style. I think it's called. Well, it's in F sharp or I don't know exactly the name, but this is the the basically a reverse application will be the dollar reverse dollar, and so but. It's the reverse of Sterling. The, it's a turn style, or how, how do you call this? Anybody knows the symbol? Well, it's reverse, yeah. Well, I don't know, but it's the reverse, you know. It, instead of saying function, Sterling applies value on the right, you get the value on the left, and you pass it to the function. So we say you create a chain. I like it's good to see the flow. Eh? We call it piping. Yeah, it's a pipe. <laughs> it is a pipe. So, so first from the string, what we want to do is check the non-empty, check the non-empty, uh, what about the functions, non-empty. Then I want validate the address, which validate the address takes the string, and then, and then I finally, I send it to ship. Um, well, Let's see if this works. Oh no, sorry, it didn't work. Great. Um, 
can okay, let's start smaller See what happens if we have a, a string here. We say that if we have Colorado uh, non empty, it's a. Um, So now we, we see if it's, uh, I, I didn't include something to, to basically do the implicit and imports of, of this library. Well, I won't call it a library because it's not production ready or maybe even viable. But basically, I, I've created this. Um, so if, if, if I pass the, um, the non empty string, This should be a string or uh, no address, which again should be but should be an empty string. But so yeah, that's no, that's another thing. Um, yeah, I guess I had to import all the. Uh -huh. uh, So let's try the um, help process if it works. No. Mm -hmm. If it's non empty, validate address. I think I had a bit of, well, okay. and talk to anybody interested with the Scala, maybe we can. So, okay. Yeah, sorry. Domain. And let's see if we have some. Yeah, so, so now it works. Apologies about that. I, I messed up something trying to fix. So we, we have a part of the small process is passing the, the input string to non-empty validated address. We saw that the Colorado is a valid address, uh, very simpl sim simple. So what happens if we add the empty string? So then we have no address. And so I'm seeing it a bit ugly because things need to be reified. But the non-empty is simply a string or no address. That should work. So 
remote validate address. Let's repeat step by step so we see. Something's wrong. That's because the type inference maybe is not getting. So, okay, let's try a string. Or if we validate the address, we'll have address. Or, or no address. Something. Functions. And okay. so what I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong. Validate address, string address. Ah, it's invalid address. That's why. So, so it's address, invalid address, or no address. That's still not working. I validate address. Because there are any other error codes. Invalid address. Uh, no address. And the final is ship, so I look at like this. So let's go back to the, the thing that was working. Five. Yeah, sorry, it will be a minute to just finish this. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I'll sit down. Yeah, okay, so now, now we should be set to go. So, so we have. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last one. Let's try with the parents if you see something. And you have the valid address as two. Uh, yeah. And into uh, And so I'm trying to interpret these error messages. Is it you've got a system that <coughs> is taking what would be the normal types of rewriting them? Yes, it's refining to uh, 
into a way that the types uh, are preserved. So, okay, if I do domain again, this loads functions, functions. Something should I should follow the, the types right? Okay, well in um, I wonder if if it's because It's not, not that. Uh, oh, but I saw, I can. Because uh, right now it's just domain scout and function scout. Mm -hmm. There is no pipe you know, Yeah. There. No, well, the idea is, I don't know. So, uh, I think. I have missed something with imports. Can I do the whole process? Good. Let's try. Uh, so let's try a valid address. And uh, still, yeah. Addresses. Yeah, this is a sorry. It's a collision name collision because I loaded twice. I loaded too many times, and now it's having a collision. Mm, okay. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, sh I shouldn't be loading anything really. It's different. If I do, I think I only need to load the. I only need to load the domain, but nothing else. No address, no functions. Let's do it at least there. So we could type this as a string, or so, so it is type safe. If we if we do this, the compiler tells us that I'm not considering all the all the cases that should be required. So it's already good. One interesting thing about the union types, I think uh, it was a question about that. We we could create more elements, and this is still valid. I mean, it's a bit nonsensical, but it, it, will, it will compile because we're simply saying that it's a member of other sets, but it's not, it's, it's not the case. So, so yeah, we're validating the things non-empty. So if we, if we do that, now we, we could have a um, uh, validator hands. The type is not correct. So now it should be a string or a valid address.
is a process here, what you see, let's see if we can get codes. So, let's see if we can do this. So that's not all the imports are. Okay, well, let's let's do let's do the whole thing with it up there. Now, now we see that um, yeah, it's it's great. So the errors are from string to to string or no address. Then I need to this is from from string to address or invalid address. And well, let's try that. Um, it's best to Something's wrong with the syntax. Um. Yeah, uh, well, I, th I think it's too, it's too good, it needs to be there, but maybe. So, so basically, each function just picks out the appropriate member of that. Yes, that's. That, yeah, that's. And you're not it, allowed to have the same type in that big union thing. Is that correct? The the type the type will will increase the. Um, but yeah. You're not allowed to repeat it. You can't say address one address. Is that correct? You could repeat it. It's basically uh, it's inconsequential. You have address or address is address. But what happens if you apply the function on that address? Would it, would it apply to uh, okay, that, that's the other, we can try that if, if that kind of work. So, if I really for example, this string, uh, let's make it x is string or no address, string or um, um, no address. So, 
not even have the implementation of this. Okay. Let's say we have no address. So if we say x go to um, validate address. Um, so So this is a string or no address. I mean, a bit stupid because if, if I do the commas, then I had to put the commas to it wouldn't have worked the, the Scala's infix application. So let's that's why it wasn't working. I need to put the parentheses around it. So let's see if it infers the um, yeah, and now we need to from string to to address or invalid address. And address, yeah, probably I'm making typos that, sorry, do you? It should be a byte there, address or invalid address of comma. Oh, no, sorry, that, that's my, my syntax. It's, um, the problem is to, in order, uh, it was working before I started in the change, and then I messed up the git. So as always have about that, but uh, while we were trying, it, it works. But in order to, to that to, for that to work, you need to do a lot of ugliness behind the scenes. So implicit conversions into refine the functions and the values. So you provide the syntax because the um, unless you do that, the usability of the union types is not going to be that great because everything gets inferred as the, the compiler when it, it gets erased it doesn't really know if it's an a or b or an a so you, you cannot basically restrict it if if, if, I, if i want to achieve that i keep all, all the i i have it type safe if i know exactly which which errors are in the in the type i need to revise it somehow to to keep the what are the classes the class tags for which is unfortunate but so, yeah, the, um, yeah, streak x, yeah, I'm doing something wrong with that. And valid address is this, uh, let's, let's, let's go one by one. Uh, yeah, so I have zero, so I have. I should go through validate address. No, that, that, that implicit, so I need to. So this is a function from string. Is there a zero number that's already there? Using that zero? Yes. It goes from string to address or invalid address. This should work. Yeah, so it works. It's basically, I was fighting the things that got messed up, was all the machinery to make it that I don't have to do anything like this. Basically, everything gets inferred, and you only work with with pure functions. So if I if I I'll, I'll push the version that works. So if I do this ugly thing, but but still, I can. The result will be 
a string, no, sorry, an address or um, invalid address or the other case, which no address, which has been carried over because rest zero could be a no address as well. Uh, rest zero, yeah. So now we see no address. We, we pipe a function validate address on. So this is similar to what you do in an either, basically it gets mapped. We, we see if we, so now we can, basically we can backtrack a bit. So we have the, so then, Um, this is a, the non-empty is from string to string or no address. And basically I'm lifting this function non-empty to this verification. So, so we see from the empty string we get no address in the end, but the, the, the advantage here is that we have a pure function non-empty that it doesn't need to care about everything upstream of the chain. So on, only matches on, on the element that that requires. If we go to Colorado, then you'll see that it goes to to address, is finding it. So we can chain it and basically, if, well, if I want to do er, error recovery, for example, I have uh, address, uh, invalid address, but maybe we say, okay, well, let's do allow full name. which it would be from, from invalid address. And this I'll finish with this invalid address or let's say to, from invalid address to basically recover to valid address. That's no, simply address. Or invalid address. Yeah, and this is anything. Really. If we have an address, invalid address. If invalid address, we keep the raw thing that we fail to parse. If to uppercase contains Colorado, let's recover it. And then it, it, this is a address, Colorado. Otherwise, we just pass it around, basically. We could have recovered, so you pass the error around. So imagine you say, ah, oh, I full name, full name. So, it is, um, Jack will see you um, Thank you. So, so now we have this function. So we had this other big sausage. Um, so, so, so that's basically the, the beauty, now I want to type something else and I don't need to care. I don't need to go changing all the previous functions, uh, adding more cases or, so yes, yeah, just to end with the, the, the pitch that am I saying, okay, this is, you could do it just with a, a little bit of boilerplate. We all know that other than if in the functions modify, no big deal, but I would argue that the, the boilerplate has a, is has a quite a big impact because we we lose the flow basically with this. Okay, I'll add this. I don't need to care about anything else. The types. I don't care if you have five errors, which is something that already is difficult to do in in Scala. You have a list of errors that are untyped. You cannot restrict it to these particular errors, and then you know exactly what could you recover. And the compiler helps you. If, if I forget any of these errors, it will. If I add more, if I add unnecessary ones, it won't tell me that they are. Uh, basically uh, unnecessary, but that's not a big deal. Probably the compiler could tell us, but the important thing is that it's type safe. We cannot, if you forget anything, it will take it. But the thing is the function doesn't need to care about all that knowledge. It just is very local, focused on, on the on localities, local thinking, which is also some something very important with the FP. So yeah, we'll, we'll pass the function that we created, which unfortunately I need to again, because I lost implicits, I need to lift it into, well, I call it FP, just a, a lifted function. And I need to also put the, all the, the signature and type parameters, which, which the 
with a library I have behind, it's not necessary. So uh, this was a recovery from invalid address. We could either get the, the address, we recover, or invalid address. Uh, I haven't passed a function. So this was um, allow full name. Yeah. And I'm missing something, invalid address. You see how the sausage is made, it's not, not pretty, but uh, invalid, yeah, probably I've done some with the signature of... So one thing that surprises me is if you just use normal classic code, you can buy this point No, because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any, any knowledge, so, so, yeah, uh, Daniel, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll push it, uh, but it, it, it's very bare bones, so, happy if anybody wants to hack. I mean, it's before, just that's the caveat that it's in order to allow single function for different things, you need to, a combinatorics of all the possible arguments. So that basically limits the, it's like the tuple 22 case. If you want to have 10 parameters, you need to do 10, 10 cases, but multiplies for, fun, this is times functions of two, functions of three, so. But I mean, it's doable and and really sorry that uh, I don't know what I've done with implicits that they're not working, but we'll I'll, I'll publish it as if anybody wants to do some hacking and, and maybe it could it, it could be doable. I don't know. It's still a work in progress, but, uh, but I think the concept is is quite powerful, and I think we should strive to achieve this kind of uh, composition of functions and basically have a better type safety. Um, that's it. Well, thank you very much for attending. <laughs>